Okay, so we're going to look at the other way that light can be seen. Now, it was believed that light, of course, behaved as a wave based on the experiments from Thomas Young's double slit experiment. Light through a double slit sent these interference patterns. Only waves interfere with each other, as you can see uh, from the water waves. Okay, but there was an experiment, which I'll show you today, that kind of showed that light wasn't just behaving as a wave. And this could be seen from what's called the photoelectric effect. So you have light strikes a surface, and on different surfaces with certain frequencies of light, you could get electrons to eject. That did not jive with what was known about light at the time, which believed, which showed that light, the energy of light, was based on its amplitude. Okay? So I have a real simple experiment that I could show here where I have different color filters. You have, you know, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. And those filters let only that frequency of light in. Okay, so if I take this and hold it up to, um, I'll put it up to this light, this light up here. Pull it really close. Get all the light on it that I can. Let me move this out. Hold it really close. So look, I'm getting maximum light. Now remember, white light carries all the frequencies, so if the white light hits one of those filters, it'll go through, but only the color that the filter lets through. Okay. Then, take this, turn it off, and notice only the blue and the violet actually got any of the strip to glow. Okay, so that tells you that blue and violet, it wasn't any brighter, it wasn't that blue and violet had brighter light from the source I was using, but blue and violet do carry different frequencies. Um, and so the energy of the light did not, the experiments didn't jive with the fact that the energy of the light was carried by the amplitude. It, it, had, it actually was more to do with the uh, frequency of the light. So here I've charged these, you can see these charged. I've charged these two negatively with a balloon. Uh, this one lost its charge. Let me charge it positively. This fun fly stick charges things positively. <clears throat> All right, so you can tell what type of charge it has. If you take a negatively charged balloon, bring it up. Notice it pushes that out even further. So that means it's repelling the electrons down. So that's already negatively charged, up, and then you repel more electrons down and becomes more negative in the leaves and spreads them out. Same thing here. Bring it close, it spreads them out. Over here though, bring it close and it brings it together. Okay, I will recharge that one in a second. It should have uh, stayed where it's at. So, with the photoelectric effect experiments, what they saw was that, let's say, didn't matter how bright the light was, I could shine green light on the surface. Wouldn't do anything. Shine it here. Okay, nothing. I could shine blue light. Blue light doesn't do anything. Red light doesn't do anything. But white light carries all the frequencies, does nothing. But take it and make it UV light you can see and watch what happens notice it ejected or it ejected those electrons and now it lost its charge it lost the excess charge that it had to spread the leaves same thing here ejected those electrons lost its excess charge okay and you can see it again um, and I'm going to use the fun flash stick this time to charge this. And we'll let that uh, slow down there. But let's go over here. So why is this happening? Well, if something's negatively charged, that means that it's got an excess of electrons everywhere. And electrons don't really want to be near each other. So they cause the leaves to spread out. When I brought the balloon close, I actually shoved more electrons down here, which caused these to spread out even more. 
Now, when you shine UV light on this object, the electrons that are at this surface eject. They go flying away. So there's your electrons flying away. And now all these electrons that have been dispersed uh, everywhere, now you got some popping off and they are allowed to spread back out in a more neutral way. And remember the positive charge don't go anywhere. When something's negatively charged, it just means it has excess negative charges. So now you have this neutralizes and you get this, these leaves back to how they were. And so this experiment proved that light wasn't just behaving as a wave, it is also behaving as a particle. Now, here's what's interesting. I take the same experiment. I charge this positively now. And you can tell it's charged positively because when I bring the negative balloon close to it, the leaves want to come together. You can see that? They want to come together. <clears throat> now before this tube discharged, I do the same thing. Notice it does not discharge the leaves because it's not charged negatively, it's charged positively. So it doesn't do anything. Again, you can charge something negatively. And the negatively charged objects can be discharged. taking its time, but it will mostly discharge. There we go, all the way down. So that is the photoelectric effect in a nutshell. Now, what is actually happening? Well, shine red light on certain surfaces and you get no ejection of electrons. Okay, shine green light, sometimes you would, depends on the surface. Okay, if I use copper or zinc, there's different surfaces you could put to make them eject uh, better or worse. Okay, so green light, higher frequency, right? Higher frequency was proving that the amplitude was not the contributing factor of the energy of the light. It was the frequency, okay? Blue, you got even more. UV light, you get even more as you get further into that spectrum. You get more and you would get higher and faster moving electrons. Now, what do moving electrons do? They will um, in induce a current, and that's what this eventually was used for. And so you had Isaac Newton talking about light being particles, and then you had Thomas Young saying it's a wave, and then, you know, Einstein is credited with this. He did ex correctly explain the photoelectric effect. Uh, that's what he won his Nobel Prize for, and now they're both right. Everybody's happy. Okay, so is light a wave or a particle? Well, it's more complicated than that. It is both. It is known as a photon, and its energy is based on its frequency. Okay, not its amplitude. And uh, so again, you can't see light, but you can model it and you can see what it does in certain scenarios. Now, how do we actually use this? Okay, well, let's say you take a solar panel and you stick it on your roof. What it's doing is light from the sun, which carries UV, carries uh, all the violet, high, high energy light from the sun will eject electrons. You can then use those electrons to induce a current. In a, in a circuit and so there you can get electricity from okay so this is uh, the modern view of light uh, it, light is not just a wave it is also a particle uh, and it behaves as both under different circumstances so hopefully this helped you kind of see the different scenarios uh, under which light acts <laughs>